Welcome, Benzinga Nation. You know we love to bring executives from publicly traded companies to get your questions answered, and we've got a great conversation happening here with Ronnie Yakov, who is the CEO and chairman, and also Patrick Smith, who's the vice president of finance of the OLB Group. Ticker on the NASDAQ is OLB. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Glad to be here. Absolutely. And look, before we go ahead and dive into the nitty gritty aspect of things, Patrick, give me a quick overview of what is it that your company does? Okay, sure. Um, OLB Group, the OLB Group is a uh, fintech company that specializes most of our revenue right now comes from the payments industry. And when I say payments, it's debit, credit card, basically electronic payment processing. Uh, that's where pretty much where we specialize. We have our own payment gateway. So that's ours. It's proprietary. We maintain that in-house. Um, we also do have software. We're also a software company. We have our own proprietary software systems. And uh, we also have a, a Bitcoin mining subsidiary at the time. Now, uh, Ronnie, you recently had a shareholder meeting, and I just want to get some quick insights. What significant outcomes or decisions were made during that meeting? Well, the, the shareholder meeting was based on uh, we, we got to a point that we have to reverse our stock. Uh, we want to avoid the delisting of Nasdaq. And that was uh, the main reason for the shareholder uh, meeting. We uh, voted 10 to 1 uh, to split the stock. That, that was the main reason to the shareholder meeting. And now, you know, you have the uh, Demon spinoff to OLB shareholders, which has been such a topic of interest, Ronnie. Give me an update on the progress of that initiative and where the company currently stands in the implementation of it. Sure. So ba basically, uh, we filed uh, last year the S1 uh, to uh, register the company to be a standalone trading company. And we got one round of comments. We answered. We got the second one that we filed um, a week ago. And we're waiting for pretty much to get the comments and see how many comments we're going to get. We anticipate uh, to get it within the next uh, two, three weeks. And uh, we'll have a good indication as when, uh, you know, we're going to set up a record date for those shareholders. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that. And then we can, you know, talk to you again once you set that date. Patrick, following the spinoff of Demons, right, the Bitcoin mining industry and the subsidiary itself, the what areas do you perceive to kind of be like the most promising for the revenue and more importantly, the income growth for the company itself? After the spin off of DMIT, I think the company is going to go back to focusing mainly on the payment side of the company. It's going to be payment processing and payment technology, anything that basically point of sale systems, anything basically a transaction based business. Uh, we've got different areas, different channels we're going after, but that will be the focus of the company. And mainly the acquisition that we did the middle of last year that is for the underbank community. We, we plan that to expand uh, tremendously and using our resources from the payment systems um, with the, this regard. That, that's the main focus. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's where I wanted to come to you next, Ronnie, is, you know, you're moving into that aspect. But what are some strategies in place to ensure the success in the area, though? Well, the strategy is we acquired uh, a platform that has a prepaid payment solution for companies that can, uh, small bodegas and convenience stores, that they can purchase products and resell them. Uh, the access is, we have today have uh, 32,000 locations that we have the distribution. Um, we started and we have now the fifth, uh, the first round is 1,800 locations that we are actively doing business with. Uh, it's a very quick product launch and we can, Pretty much the same day, we can launch an offering to all those locations uh, in one solution. It's re reliable customer service that is 24-7. We have instant reporting to the bodega owners and uh, to everybody in the network, including the distributors. Uh, and we have direct access to close to 2 million consumers in this respect. Uh, it's very reliable uh, marketing uh, team that is marketing those things. Yeah. I love the fact that you can kind of provide those updates and reports such at great speeds because it's kind of important for the company and the business to kind of know, hey, what products are selling, what margins am I at, where are the revenue is at. So that's quite important. Speaking of money, Patrick, you had a net loss of more than $23 million last year, which is up significantly from 2022. Tell me why and do you expect this trend to kind of continue for the rest of 2024? First of all, I don't think the trend will continue for 2024. Um, it was a significant increase in the losses previous year. The biggest piece of the loss is we had to actually write off one of the portfolios. We did an acquisition at the end of 2021, and there's some litigation around it, but we, we had to 
basically completely terminate and write that off this year. That was a $12, $14 million write-off. So that was a huge piece of the write-off. The next piece of the loss would be related to amortization depreciation. The mining equipment that we have for the Bitcoin mining, it's pretty, it, the depreciation on that's pretty heavy, you know, because we've got, we've spent over $9 million on machines and all that's being depreciated off. Uh, other than that, we also, due to the write-off of the portfolio, our litigation expense was up for the year. And so that was another significant increase. All right, Ronnie, everyone in the world is talking about AI, right? From chat GPT to the video side of things. What are some tools that you feel like are really, really bringing disruptive innovations in the tech space? Well, I mean, we, we're looking at those things and we already uh, started working on some developments related to that. Uh, we're going to announce probably within a few months uh, products that are from our core uh, software that are coming to invoice that are predicting pretty much how to build the invoices, our payment gateway with all the tools and recurring billings. The, all of them going to be uh, components coming from the AI solutions to that. Definitely everybody is going to start using it. Uh, we're using, uh, starting to use already some tools that are related to customer service that would pretty much take the heavy lifting from a uh, human being answering to those things. You know, I, Ronnie, I saw like a um, an article the other day about how having AI, especially in the customer service space, not only increases the speed of responses, but also the accuracy and the problem solving as well. So it kind of gives you a lot of benefits on that aspect. So I'm looking forward to what you guys do with it. Patrick, final thoughts from you? No, I think Ronnie's right. I mean, I think we're, we're working on different things. And to your point, the AI with customer service is, is kind of like a, a chat on steroids. So it's, it's a little more accurate and gets things done a little quicker. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Ronnie, final thoughts, any topics that you wanted to discuss that I didn't get a chance to bring up? Yes. Uh, we, on the last uh, year and a half, we're going under very big litigation with uh, the people that sold us the portfolio uh, the company is called FFS Data, and you know they're basically they're the bridge of uh, uh, you know fiduciary duties and contracts uh, that uh, basically uh, ended up you know us writing uh, twelve million dollars of the portfolio itself. Uh, it's ongoing uh, litigation with them and also with the bank that was involved. That's clear for bank. Uh, both of them are still on the going litigation. So I cannot put more details on that uh, on the camera, but definitely over the coming days, we're going to put also shareholder letter that would describe the entire situation itself. Well, hey, I look forward to having more conversations when that gets finalized. And of course, many more for the rest of 2024. Thank you both so much for joining us. I appreciate it Thank you for having us. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. That is Ronnie Jakob, who is the CEO and chairman. And you've also got Patrick Smith, the vice president of finance for the OLB group. Ticker on the NASDAQ is OLB.